Welcome to AEP SPAN's Certified Nano Course 1 Metal Roof Penetrations. This course provides approximately 15 minutes of quality learning. At the end of the course, there will be a quiz and answer all three questions correctly to receive 0.25 AIA learning units. This course explores the different types of metal rooftop penetrations, concerns dealing with improper installation or failures, and associated details and installation practices to ensure a properly performing and long-lasting metal rooftop penetration. Our knowledgeable architectural representative, Jeff Maderos, will be taking you through the three learning objectives. The first covers the different types of metal roof penetrations. The second learning objective is understanding the installation concerns and failures and the installation best practices. And the final learning objective is learning the details associated with proper penetration installations. So let's get started. Proper installation of roof penetrations and curbs for metal rooftop equipment is a critical component in a properly functioning roof system. So in the first learning objective, we are going to explore some of the different types of metal rooftop penetrations. There are three different types of metal roof penetrations. So let's go through each of them. The first type is pipe penetrations. Some examples of these types of penetrations are vent pipes such as plumbing vents and conduit. The second is curb mounted penetrations. Some examples of this would include HVAC, hatches, skylights, and tubular skylights. The third category is surface mounted penetrations. Examples include attic or roof vents and lightning protection. Here is an example of a pipe boot penetration. Pipe penetrations are cylindrical penetrations that utilize a flexible pipe boot attached to the panel in order to isolate the panel from the penetration. Pipe penetrations and plumbing vents are the most common type of metal roof penetration due to their sheer abundance and necessity. Conduit penetrations are also handled as a pipe penetration due to their cylindrical shape. Conduit can contain anything from electrical lines to gas lines, so care should be taken when selecting the boot material type. Curb mounted penetrations are the second type of metal roof penetration. Curbs are raised platforms which isolate the penetration from the roofing system. They often cover multiple panel widths due to the size required to mount the variety of fixtures to the curb top. A multitude of fixtures can be used on mounted curbs. As you can see here, the most common is HVAC. Large pipes, skylights, and rooftop hatches. The third type of metal roof penetration are surface mounted penetrations. These are mounted directly on a panel, to a rib, or integrated into the system itself. They tend to be small and sleek. This is an example of a half round louver vent. Lightning protection may also be a surface mounted penetration by either using clamps to ballast a PV or where a ground is required to penetrate the metal roofing system. In the second learning objective, we will now explore installation concerns or failures as well as installation best practices. We will again begin with pipe penetrations. This pipe is mounted incorrectly with a pipe boot that is not properly sized and incorrectly placed up against a rib. This will not thermally isolate the pipe as it is in direct contact with the rib. The panel seam is compromised as is the pipe penetration. Additionally, Moisture will collect in the folds of the flashing, causing a premature failure. Pipe penetrations come in many different sizes to accommodate penetrations of all sizes. It is important to maintain a minimum of a 4 inch clearance on either side of the base of the boot in order for water to be able to freely flow around each side. If this clearance is not possible, as is common with larger circumference pipes, a different detail must be used. A pipe boot with the appropriate base width is selected, then the top cut to the size of the penetration. 
A pipe boot attaches to the metal panel and the penetration passes through the boot. The pipe penetration itself doesn't move or contact the roof as it may experience vibration which would otherwise damage the roof or fracture the pipe if it were permanently fixed to the roofing material. The boot must be able to move freely with the roofing system while allowing the pipe to remain stationary. The boot can also accommodate vibration from the pipe to keep it intact or isolated. Curb mounted penetrations typically cover multiple panel widths. Because of their size, water runoff from the upslope panels located behind the curb becomes an issue. Crickets should be utilized to divert water around the curb by directing water to either side of centerline. This photo shows curbs with crickets properly installed to divert water around the curb. Note how the crickets have the peak of the slope dead center on the curb so as to equally divert water to either side. The tail or leading edge or flange of the cricket is flashed under the upslope panel. IBC 1503.5 does not require crickets for curbs with a width of 30 inches or less. However, any curb 30 inches or wider will require a cricket. It is best practice to place curbs as far upslope as possible in order to minimize the water collection from the uphill panels. The higher upslope the penetrations are located, the less water can accumulate on the panel run and the easier it is to route the water around the penetration. Penetrations located upslope route significantly less water than those located downslope. Skylights and solar tubes are also handled by mounting them on curbs. They should never be installed directly on a panel as there is no way to effectively waterproof and isolate the condition from the roofing system. Again, use crickets when installing curbs to divert water. For surface mounted penetrations, attic and roof vents may not always be present. However, if they are, they must be installed in line with the panels and preferably as close to the ridge as possible to minimize the amount of water runoff they will be exposed to. When small, they can be directly mounted to the panel. When they will violate the 4 inch rule on either side of the penetration, which is pretty common, they must be built on a curb. Lightning protection may penetrate the roof where a ground is required. It can wrap around the eave and terminate at the foundation, or it can be mounted to the clamps to isolate the cable from damaging the roof from movement due to wind, vibration, or the panel's own thermal movement. Other installation concerns or failures include the proper use of sealant. Failed sealant will fail to keep moisture out and will eventually become a direct point of moisture entry. If damaged, remove all sealant, clean and dry the application area, and reapply. Be sure to use an exterior grade UV stable sealant that can flex with the thermal movements of the metal such as a polyurethane. Exposure to the elements is the primary cause of sealant failure. Sealant will degrade over time and will always remain a serviceable item that must be checked regularly for integrity. The pipe boot flashing itself can fail for the same reasons as sealant. Exposure to the elements as well as for mechanical vibration and thermal movement. Holes and tears can develop which is a direct point of entry for moisture. Pipe penetrations should emerge in the dead center of the panel whenever possible. If it doesn't line up with the center of the panel, the use of a 45 degree bend in the pipe below the metal roofing membrane should be implemented in order to move the pipe the required distance so that it can emerge closer to the center of the panel. Occasionally this will not be possible and a cut rib detail can be used. While dissimilar metals is a primary concern in all metal roofing systems, so is the use of incompatible sealants and asphaltic based materials. Asphaltic based mastics will absorb heat from the metal, gray out, and prematurely fail. 
Only use appropriate sealants and butyl with the metal panel to ensure material compatibility. Metal roofing systems thermally cycle. They expand and contract along with the ambient temperatures. The rough opening in the metal panel must be large enough to accommodate for this inherent movement in the panel, but small enough for the base of the pipe penetration to cover it. The pipe penetration will stay in place while the panel and boot will move around it. This is the purpose of the flexible pipe penetration, to move with the metal panel and absorb and flex around the rigid pipe. In the third learning objective, we will look at the information that we have covered so far and show some details for proper installation. Here is a typical pipe penetration. There are two detail requirements. One, the penetrations should be centered in the panels, if at all possible. And two, the substrate must be cut out enough so that the pipe boot is only attached to the roof panel. When a pipe penetration is too large to be centered within the panel and have adequate space on either side to allow for water runoff, a cut rib detail or a home plate detail must be used to mount to the rib. When a penetration is too large to fit within the confines of one panel width or is located directly on a rib, the correct detail is to elevate the penetration on a plate placed on the center rib of two adjacent panels and flash with a Z closure which is attached on the flat pan of the roof panel and on the top side to the plate. This way the panel rib is continuous and the penetration is correctly isolated. Photovoltaic panels are frequently installed and seemingly require countless pipe penetrations in order to support them. By using seam clamps which are attached to the panel ribs there are no roofing penetrations required. The PV subframing is then mounted to the clamps and finished with the PV system. This photo shows the subframing attached to the clamps and the PV installed on top. Here is a proper installation of a curb with crickets. A curb typically has a cricket on the upslope side, which is fastened to the roof panel and to the equipment curb in order to divert water around the sides of the curb so it doesn't collect and pool on the upslope side. It also typically has a counter flashing which is fastened to the top of the curb and has a hem with a kick for a counter flashing on the side. Downslope, a Z is installed to restart the panel run accompanied with a head wall trim fastened to the curb with a counter flashing for protection. This allows the upslope and downslope panels to move independently with the curb. Let's do a quick recap. The three types of metal roof penetrations are pipe penetrations, curb mounted penetrations, and surface mounted penetrations. While each of these penetrations is different and has its own individual detailing, there are two concerns that they all share. First, quickly routing water around the penetration. Second, thermally isolating the penetration from the metal roofing system, which allows everything to independently thermally cycle. Improper installation may lead to premature failure of the penetration or moisture entry into the roofing system. Details for the proper installation of each penetration are available from their respective manufacturers and should be followed to ensure properly performing and long-lasting metal rooftop penetrations. Thank you for spending time with AEP SPAN and taking our nano course. AEP SPAN is a premier metal roof and wall product manufacturer and a trusted partner for over 50 years, offering an unrivaled commitment to the success of architects in achieving innovative built environments where people work, learn, live, and play.